there was excitement for the team to get back into play. Uh, and then the team ran into a three-game losing streak, unfortunately. So um, they got back on the seventh to face the New York Islanders. A four to nothing loss for the game. A centerman, Matty Paneers, one shot, two hits, and one takeaway, usually with the shutouts. We don't put any player in the game, but I'm trying to be nicer about that. But yeah, Seattle get shut out in their first game back from the All Star break, kind of a rude awakening. It was also Will Borgen's 100th NHL game. So kind of unfortunate for Will to uh, stumble into that one, but. Uh, you know, still, still an accomplishment to note. On the ninth, the team traveled to New Jersey to face the Devils. Things were close. They had a two-to-one deficit to try to overcome late in the third period, but an empty net goal would end things and all hope for Seattle. Our player of the game defenseman, Adam Larson, uh, the Swedish defenseman, had one goal, one point, a one plus minus, four shots on goal, three hits, and two blocks. So Lars continues to be a stellar part of that top defenseman pairing for the Kraken. Seattle was unable to get that done, unfortunately, uh, to get the win for the former Devil in Larson. Um, on February 10th at the New York Rangers, a 6-3 to three loss. This one was just, just ugly. Seattle was able to battle back a little bit as the third period went on, but ultimately fell to the Rangers uh, and were unable to complete, uh, even get close to completing that comeback attempt ultimately giving up the empty netter to make it 6-3. to three. Our player of the game for Oliver Bjorkstrand. Bjorkstrand, one goal, one assist, two points, two shots on goal, and one takeaway in the loss there. So they would hit a three-game skid, and JT Brown, I believe it was actually in the Islanders game, he said that, you know, it's okay to lose a few games here and there, but this stretch was important, this road trip was important because of how tight the Pacific division race is and how, you know, going on skid could really knock you down a few pegs. Seattle was able to stop the bleeding on February 12th at the Philadelphia Flyers, a four to three win. Philly would get a late goal uh, on a shorthand, a shorthanded goal to put them within one. Thankfully, they would not be able to get a goal uh, with their goalie pulled. Our player of the game, uh, for Jaden Schwartz, Schwartz contributing two goals, two points, a one plus minus, and five shots on goal. This win would also be Ryan Donato's 300th NHL game. Um, our player of the week, or my player of the week, uh, is defenseman Vince Dunn. Dunn had three assists, three points, seven shots, 12 hits, and four blocks over the case over the course of the past week. And again, you know, we talked about Larson in that Devils game. But that top defenseman pairing of Dunn and Larson has been incredible. Uh, and I would really, really like this is another campaign uh, to get Vince Dunn paid and get him an extension. So just looking over the past three games is I've got I've got this. I don't know. We're going to put it out here. This is the Black History Month uh, Hyphen Night uh, logo that was designed by, by Ollie G at uh, the South Ender, all one word, T-H-E. S O U F E N D E R on Instagram. That's the artist that designed this logo here. Got the hat on, and I've got my sticker on the laptop here. Um, but yeah, the, the past three games were unfortunate. You know, it's a tough road trip. The Islanders are a good team. They had just added Bo Horvat. Horvat scored his first goal as an Islander in that game. Uh, the Devils. The Devils are one of the top three teams in the NHL. So going in there into their building and beating them is no easy feat. And Seattle got back. And there, just unfortunately, the Devils got the two goals on power plays because Seattle was not disciplined enough and could not stay out of the box, um, putting out their near league worst penalty kill out again, again, again. Uh, the Rangers are a solid team. They had just added Vladimir Tarasenko, and Tarasenko scored his first goal as a Ranger against the Kraken. You can see a trend here, right? Um, the Flyers, the Flyers are a very middling team. They're a very young team, so figuring things out, but this is a game they should have won. Seattle gave up a power play goal in the first period, and they're thinking, oh man, here we go again. But they're, they're able to wake up and figure things out through the second period and third period. Uh, and now they have to finish this road trip out against Winnipeg here tomorrow. And Winnipeg is one of the better teams in the NHL as well. So it's not an easy stretch, and I understand that. I'll cut them some slack. But a lot of the issues that I continue to be frustrated about are issues that aren't getting adjusted. They're issues that aren't being fixed. They're obvious issues like taking dumb penalties and sending your penalty kill out again and again and again. Your power play continues to struggle. Uh, I know that they had hit a really bad snag. They were like 10% on the power play in the last 11 games or so. Jared McCann scored a power play goal. 
Uh, I believe it was in the Rangers game, yeah. Uh, but the power play continues to struggle, right? There were some of the key defensive mistakes that we saw throughout the earlier course of the season and throughout basically all of last season that took place in the Rangers game and the Islanders game. So, again, I understand that they're coming off of break, but you're in a position now that you want to keep if you want to make the playoffs and be considered a serious team in the NHL. But isn't that such a fortune as a second-year team, the second year as an expansion team to be in a spot like that? It's incredible. But you have issues that you need to fix and you need to address and you need to do that before they grow or they get worse or you take a somewhat further down the standings. So, anyway, rent concluded. Uh, we'll go to some injury news here. Not so fun. Um, the seventh, well, we'll get to Berkey first. Berkey on the eighth uh, was placed on injured reserve with a lower body injury. He is considered week to week. Uh, Ron Francis was not sure when we'd get him back. They'd like to see him back sooner than later. But as of right now, he's considered week to week. Uh, and that's, that's unfortunate for the team's leading point getter. He was leading uh, the team's leading point getter. Vince Dunn might have overtaken him. Uh, in total points, but still unfortunate to lose Berkey for any point in time uh, due to an injury. Um, on the seventh, uh, the well, that's the day of the game. On the sixth, rather, uh, in the practice before the Islanders game, we would find out that goaltender Chris Rieger is traveling with the team and participating in team drills. So we we've reported this, we've said this on our Twitter. Again, this is a great example for you to go and follow us on Twitter. On Twitter, it's at Circling Sports. We can't fit the whole thing on Twitter. Um, but we've reported for months now that Chris Trieger has been out practicing, usually by himself and with uh, goaltender coach Steve Brier, uh, usually technical assistant coach Matt Lark is out there as well, um, has been practicing getting back up the strength after tearing his ACL in the summer uh, with Team Canada. We've reported that for weeks now. People are like, oh, he's back. How long has he been? Is this the first time? I'm like, no, he's been out there for weeks. We've been reporting this. He's been practicing before morning skates and before team practices. Um, he was getting more and more involved over the last few weeks, and now he's actually tr uh, traveling with the team. This has been a discussion that a lot of fans have not been ready for, is that what's going to happen with the goalies um, once he's ready to go? Is Martin Jones out after having a really great start to the year but struggling? Uh, recently in 2023. There's no way Philip Grubauer is going anywhere, considering, one, considering his contract is immovable, um, and two, how great he's been playing since the uh, since the calendar year of 2023 has started, right? So it's it's Jones or Drieger, and I'm just putting this out there now, I bet Jones is out. I have to think that, considering his age, considering the contract he's on, he was only signed to be a placeholder until Drieger was back anyway, I know people, you know, he had a great start for the year, racked up a good amount of wins. Uh, he played solid for what Seattle wanted him to be, and that's all he needed to be. But at the end of the day, he was just a stop guy. He was just a stop guy. So it should be Chris Drieger here back again uh, for the Kraken soon. But that, you know, technically that decision still has to be made. As a corresponding move to Berkey being placed on injured reserve on the 8th, like we mentioned, the team activated defenseman Justin Schultz from the injured reserve list. And he's been playing ever since. So that's a good piece of news if you want to take that. Uh, just unfortunate to lose Berkey, but great to have Schultz back back in the lineup as well, uh, which does, you know, I know that people were excited to get Jacob Megna. We talked about him last week with the trade that the Kraken made, um, but Megna has now slotted to a healthy scratch. So we're going to move over here to our up uh, next. Uh, the team sits at a 30 win, 18 loss, five overtime loss record. They are second in the Pacific Division at 65 points. Looking ahead, the team plays three games over the course of next week, two at home. February 14th at the Winnipeg Jets is a 5 p.m. Pacific time puck drop. Uh, February 14th, pardon me, 16th at the, uh, versus the Philadelphia Flyers at home. They just played Philly on the road. They'll come and play them back at home. Uh, is a 7 o'clock start, so Seattle will look to make it 2-0 over the Flyers after beating them for the first time in franchise history yesterday. And then to wrap up the week, February 18th versus the Detroit Red Wings is a 7.30 p.m. puck drop. Uh, and that game against the Red Wings is actually when, uh, in warm-ups, the team rolled on their special edition Black History Month. Hockey is for everyone jerseys uh, with this logo on it. So that'll be really exciting to see, and I'm really excited to see 
our photographer for the night there on site, Live Lions, get great shots of those warm ups and to see those great warm up jerseys. So, um, merchandise for this, if you're looking for this logo, uh, they've got stickers, they've got patches, they've got pins, they've got, I'm not wearing my shirt today. No, um, and a hoodie. Uh, the Seattle Kraken team stores got them at all their locations. Uh, they will have uh, pucks with the logo on it at the game itself. Um, so, yeah, that's, I'm not trying to plug. I mean, the sponsorship would be great. Um, but just wanted to note that there. If you're like, hey, I like his hat.